Oops. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Well, good to see you. I hope you can all hear me okay online. Um, thanks, Andrew. Once again, hi, Sanjay. Hi, Daniel. Hello, Livia. Good to see you. Hey, Coffee. Hi. Good morning. Good evening, or wherever you're from. Hi, Lucy. Hey, Sam. Hi, Shani. Good, good, good. Thanks for joining. Let's, let's pray. Uh, we'll get started. Okay. Father, we thank you. We honor you today. Uh, we love you, Lord. We, uh, in uh, everything that is happening around us, Lord, we want to uh, silence our hearts, uh, fix our eyes on you, Jesus. It is very easy for us to uh, be overwhelmed and get lost with uh, everything that is happening around us with regards to life and studies and careers and fear of tomorrow, anxieties and whatnot. Uh, Lord, as your word says, and you, as your word has commanded us to be still and know that you are God. Holy Spirit, I pray that this morning, even as we prepare our hearts to um, learn about you and to minister healing and deliverance. Uh, Lord, I pray that we will simply be still and uh, know that you are God. Uh, you are sovereign in everything that you do, Lord. Um, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of wisdom. We invite you this morning uh, to pour out your wisdom over us, to help us understand uh, your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, great. All good? Uh, all fine? Okay. Okay. Uh, today, uh, let's. Uh, we're going to start with uh, chapter 3. Uh, we finished, we've completed chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 in itself is quite a, a, an extensive chapter. It's a long chapter. Um, there's a lot of information in chapter 2, but we've just completed chapter 2 in the last class. Um, we will now move into chapter 3 called The Father's Works. Uh, what I want to do is I want to combine chapter 3 and chapter 5, if that's possible in the time that we have, okay? Um, and then we'll look at chapter 4 separately, okay? We'll try and combine chapter 3 and chapter 5, all right? Um, so, but let's look at chapter 3. Um, Chapter 3 is really very simple. Uh, you know, it just only talks about Jesus, and there's a lot of scriptures from the gospel according to John. Um, gospel according to John. Uh, I, it, it's, it's a very unique gospel, right? Um, but in the whole gospel of John, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that happens, but uh, in my opinion, it's like one big, big love letter between the father and the son uh, you know it's, it's like the father is constantly telling I love you son I love you son I love you son and then son is saying I love you father I love you father I love you father um, yeah did you get what I'm saying okay it's uh, so the gospel according to John is one big love letter between the father and the son uh, and so that's what this chapter is all about um, you know where Jesus is testifying about healing and deliverance, about everything that he is doing. Okay, so let's look at uh, chapter 3. It, the whole chapter, it starts off by saying, the first line, it says, the Lord Jesus came to do the works of the Father. The Lord Jesus came to do the works of the Father. Father, okay. Now, if we were to ask this question, to uh, if I were to ask you this question, hey, why did Jesus come? Jesus, you would say, Jesus came to die on the cross. Jesus came to forgive our sins. Uh, Jesus came to do this. Jesus came to do that, etc., etc. Uh, but very rarely you will hear a person that will say, Jesus came to do the works of the Father. Okay. So, can everybody say that? Why did Jesus come? Jesus came to. Okay, not very convincing. Come on, guys. <laughs> okay, you're you're saying it like as if you came to do the works of the Father. <laughs> I mean, we are sent. <laughs> but, okay, so why did Jesus come? Jesus came to 
do the works of the Father. Okay, if you have a highlighter, highlight that line because that's what we're going to be looking at. Okay, um, let that sink deep in. Okay, let it sink deep in. Only when we understand that line, when we we will understand what he says in John chapter 20. In John chapter 20, Jesus says, As the Father has sent me, I send you. Okay, can I say that again? As the Father has sent me, I send you. That means, as I came to do the works of the Father, now I'm sending you to do the works of the Father. That means, when you and I minister in healing and deliverance, we are also doing the works of the Father. Are you, are you with me? Yeah, it's so basic. It is so fundamental to uh, you know our Christian faith, but it is so profound and so powerful. Okay, um, so we are called to do the works of the Father, just like Jesus. Um, Jesus was asked a lot of questions, and which we will look at in just a moment about how um, you know. There's this time. Where the, some Pharisees ask, if you are really the Son of God, please tell us plainly that we will understand. Okay, please, you know, has anybody asked you this question, or as a kid, you played a game saying, it's like, please tell me the answer, please tell me the answer, please, you know, <laughs> it's like you uh, ask a puzzle or a tricky question, uh, you mess with someone's head. And they give up. It's like okay, I give up. I don't know what the answer is. Just please, 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 please tell me. You know, I think some people uh, went mad like that. It's like okay, if you are the Messiah, please just tell us plainly who you are. Uh, but you know what Jesus did as a response um, to prove his divinity or to prove uh, that he is a son of God. He could have said. He could have pointed to his virgin birth. You know that his conception and how he was born. Yes or no? Right? He could have pointed to angels that sang when he was born. He could have pointed to that star that was shining and how the East uh, wise men traveled so far just to meet with him. Jesus could have pointed to any of that later on. But he did not point to any of those supernatural things. It, instead, Jesus always pointed to the works that he was doing. What was the works? He was ministering healing and deliverance and the miracles that he was doing. He always pointed to the miracles that he was doing to prove that he is the one. Are you with me? Okay, uh, so let's look at this, um, you know, John chapter 5 in your notes. John chapter 5, verse 31 to 36. Um, talks about John the Baptist, a greater witness than John the Baptist. Now, So John chapter 5, verse 31 to 36, it says, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. It's like a tongue twister, no? Betty butter, bitter butter, but, but you know, all that. And so, yeah. You, know, you have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than John's. For the work which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me, that the, that the Father has sent me. Okay, this is the beginning of how Jesus is pointing to the works that he is doing, bears greater witness than that of John the Baptist. What was the witness, uh, what was the testimony of John the Baptist about Jesus? What was his testimony about Jesus? Right, so we. John the Baptist introduces Jesus to the world two times, in a way, in a sense. So the second time he introduces Jesus to the world by saying, I baptize you in water, but then he who comes after me will baptize you in spirit and fire. Right? That's the second time. What's the first time? Uh, thank you, Omar. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the 
sins of the world. John the Baptist is literally introducing Jesus to the world. Hey, behold the Lamb of God. That means he's being a witness to who Jesus is. You know, in the verse 31, it's, it starts off by saying, if I bear a witness of myself, my witness is not true. What does that mean? You can't testify for your own self. Okay, so let's say I committed murder. Okay. Okay, or I can't go and stand in front of the judge and say, I did not do it. I'm innocent. I'm lying one, but then I'm also trying to bear false witness, right? But the judge will say, okay, hey, I can't take you for your word. Is there any uh, someone else who can testify to what you're saying? Is there any other witness that saw you and that can say that okay, no, he did not do it? Are you with me? Right? And so that's that's simply what the first line means in verse 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So Jesus is saying, Hey, I am not saying I'm the Son of God, I'm the Son of God, I'm the Son of God. All those there are so many times he's done that in the Gospel of John, but he's saying. You know, more than the witness or the testimony of John the Baptist, more than what he, you know, that he acknowledged and he recognized, he introduced me to the world, more than that, the works that I do bear greater witness about me because I do the works of the Father. This is very powerful. Uh, Guys, okay, and I really hope that it sinks in uh, to us because this, this that's what this whole chapter is all about. And the reason I wanted to combine chapter three and chapter five is it's because it's linked and how you know how Jesus ministered and what he did and why he did what he did. Okay. Now we know that John the Baptist kind of introduced Jesus to the world, but it's the same John the Baptist later on in Matthew eleven seems to have a little bit of a doubt. Matthew 11, verse 1 to 6, it, it says, I'm again reading all of this from your notes, okay? It says, And now it came to pass, when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples, that he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell the things which you hear and see. The blind see, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and, and, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So once again, um, Jesus is referring to what? His? Jesus is referring to? His miracles. Yeah, his miracles. Thank you. To the works that he is doing. Okay. When when John the Baptist is in prison, he sends his disciples to find out. Okay. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's uh, who? Who are you really? Uh, you know. But then again, Jesus is referring to the works that he is doing. Okay. Let's move on to the next section. I must do the works, the Father's works. I must do the Father's works. Uh, John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. Let's read that. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me. Highlight that, okay? Verse 4. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when Jesus had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go. Wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and came back seeing. 
Um, so the key verse of that entire uh, chapter or the passage from John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7 is verse 4. Again, he's saying, I must work the works of the Father. So Jesus is passing by. He sees this blind man. And then he's like, okay, you know, he's, he's reminding, or he's reminded, not reminded, that would be wrong. Um, so it comes to his attention that I have to do the works of the Father. Right? And which is uh, minister healing to this person. Why? Because the works I do bear witness of me. John chapter 10, verse 24, 25, and 37 and 38. Um, please pay attention to those full verses as I read. Then Jesus surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> then Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Can you imagine the conversation? At, right now, I'm just reading it. Okay, okay, Jesus around it, and they asked him if you tell us Christ plainly, you know. It's just like, but imagine that I'm having this conversation, with, like we are having this conversation. Nelson is asking me, if you are the Christ, please tell me. And I'm like, you know, I told you. Well, you're not believing. What can I do? You know, it's uh, the real conversation must be must would have been sparkling. Okay, so John chapter ten verse twenty five. Remember, okay, these verse. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Once again, what are the works of Jesus? Ministering, healing, and deliverance. Okay, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, healing the sick, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then he goes on to say in the same chapter, in verse 37, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. Just think about the weight of that statement. He's not saying, okay, once again, he's, Jesus is not pointing to his uh, supernatural birth. Hey, don't you know how I, how I was conceived? Don't you know who gave birth to me? Don't you know how I was born? Don't you know how many choirs, you know, how many angels sang for my birthday? He doesn't say all of that. Instead, he's saying, hey, believe me because of the works that I am doing. So there was really something, if Jesus has to say about, you know, he's constantly pointing to his works, which is ministering, healing, and deliverance, we need to understand the importance of ministering, healing, and deliverance. It reveals the Father. It's simply, it's what it is. It, it reveals the Father. Okay? Are you all alive? All good? Okay. How's everyone online doing? All okay. I'm just going to have a little bit of coffee. Ah, the elixir of the gods. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Um, so the works I do bear witness of me, and he goes on to emphasize it uh, even more. He says, believe me for the sake of the works. Believe me for the sake of the works. In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 13, again, uh, I would love to read the whole passage. Actually, let me read it for us. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 13. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there, you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, had to be Thomas. Okay. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? So it is in this context, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So disciples of Jesus have spent enough time with Jesus. And Jesus is saying, okay, you know, I'm, you, you don't know where I'm going. 
Um, and then Thomas says, uh, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And then Jesus answers amazingly that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus must have gone, okay. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Okay, The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, okay, here we go. He's saying, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or, if that is too much for you, believe me for the sake of the works themselves. If it is too much for you to believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, and if it's too much for you to believe and understand that if you've seen me, that you've seen the Father, if all of that is too complicated and too theological, just look at the works that I'm doing and believe in that. And that is more than enough. Believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Are you all with me? Yes? OK. <laughs> the next section talks about Jesus walked with the Father. How did Jesus walk with the Father? What was his relationship with the Father? We need to press in to walk in similar manner with the Father. So uh, can we just pause here for a minute and, uh, and Jesus, the Son of God, he's, he's God incarnate in flesh, right? Philippians chapter 2 says, Jesus, who God himself did not consider to be equal with God, but he took on the form of the man in flesh. Jesus, co-equal with God, second head of the Trinity. He was always, he has always existed from before time began. And in the Gospels, time and time and time again, Jesus says, I do what the Father tells me to do. I say what the Father tells me to say. What I teach is not my own thing. Just imagine, just think about the humility of Jesus and the intimate walk that he had with his Father. In John chapter 1, verse 18, it says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Have you all studied uh, Christology this, this semester or last semester? This semester. We are doing this semester. Ah, okay, this semester. Okay. Yeah, there's... Uh, Yeah, so uh, that that verse is is used uh, quite a bit in, uh, in the topic of Christology and how that he says no one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son. It simply means to say that he existed before. That's simply that's what John chapter one and verse one and two and verse fourteen says, isn't it? In the beginning was the Word, Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right. So he walked with. Uh, and in, uh, with a very close, intimate relationship with the Father. Um, John chapter 10, verse 15. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. I and the Father are one. That's John chapter 10, verse 30. And the Father loves his Son. John chapter 3, verse 35. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Verse 10. 
17. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. John 8, 54, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me of whom you say that he is your God. John 15, 10, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. John 16, 32, Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Like I said you know, in the beginning of this class, is the Gospel of John is like one big love letter between the Father and the Son. Right? I love you, you love me. Uh, you know, He loves me more, I love him more. Uh, right, And because I love him, I do his will. Because I love him, I, I speak what he says. Because I love him, uh, you know, I will obey his commandments. Uh, and, uh, and everything I say to you is what he teaches me to say, or what I've heard him say. Right? If there was one person uh, who could have walked on this earth and not have to pray, it was Jesus. Can I say that again? If there was one person on this earth who did not have to pray, was Jesus. Yes or no? He's the son of God. He's God himself. Right? <laughs> but time and time and time again, we see that Jesus went to a quiet place. While it was still dark, he went to a secluded place right, to spend time in praying and, and, and just hearing from God. So uh, how much more should we? How much more should we? Do, do we have the same passion and desire and seal um, to talk about the works of the Father like Jesus is talking? Are we so much in love with our God that we will talk just the way like Jesus did? Right? Um, there's so many verse, verse after verse after verse after verse, I, and I, I hope it really inspires us to walk in such intimacy with, with, with our Father, uh, just like Jesus did, okay? Um, the remainder of the, of the chapter is pretty much similar to everything what we want to cover. It's Jesus talking about the works of the Father, doing what he says, uh, what the Father tells him to do. Let's move to chapter 5. Let's look at chapter 5. Chapter 5 is titled, The Secret to Ministry as Demonstrated by Jesus. Okay, the Secret to Ministry as Demonstrated by Jesus. So what, was, what were uh, the keys or the secrets to Jesus' ministry? Uh, we, okay, so now we know that everything what he did was uh, what he saw the Father do, or what the Father told him to do, right? or what the Father taught him to do. Uh, and so... Let's look at some of the practical aspects of it as well. So there are four keys, four important keys or secrets to ministry as the Lord Jesus demonstrated. First one, ministering out of intimacy and obedience. Ministering based on the finished work of the cross. Ministering from a place of dominion and authority. And ministering through the presence and the power of the Christ, of the Spirit. Okay, uh, John chapter 15, verse 4, 5, and 7. It says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And John chapter 15, verse 9 and 10, same chapter. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my command, commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Okay. So ministering out of intimacy and obedience. 
Um, you know, I, I'm sure I've used this statement uh, before, at least in praise and worship. Um, a statement I will never forget what my friend said in 2011. We were having a very casual conversation um, after coffee, and he said, uh, with intimacy, God will use you. Without intimacy, you will be using God. I'll say that again. With intimacy, God will use you. Without intimacy, you will be using God. Have you ever felt being used in your life? Someone is using you just for your skills and your gift? I feel used by this person. All they care about is my talent. They don't really care about the person of who I am. Have you ever felt that? Is it a very nice feeling? It's a very cheap feeling, isn't it? Like You feel so cheap and it's like all they want is my talent. They don't really care about the person that I am. No one has felt? Okay. <laughs> very good. <laughs> so what is the point is Let's say I have no intimate walk with Jesus, okay? And let's say I am the, I am the worship leader, right? In, in this context, I am the worship pastor, right? I am the worship pastor. I serve as a worship pastor at All People's Church. Um, from Monday to Saturday, I live in sin, right? I watch what I'm not supposed to watch. I say things that I'm not supposed to be saying. I do things I'm not supposed to be doing. But Sunday morning, take the guitar. Here I am to worship. Here I am to. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin. Oh, thank you, Lord. And worship service is over. You wonderful people, you come and tell me. It's like Roshan, Brother Roshan. The worship was so powerful. I felt his love. You see, I would have not walked in intimate relationship with the Father through the week. But when I pick up the guitar and I just sing song and I lead in worship, God will show up not because of me, because he loves you. Are you with me? Jesus will show up he will touch you. He will overwhelm you with his love. Not because I am singing, here I am to worship. But because he loves you. But what have I done? Did I, did I allow God to use me or did I use his goodness and manipulate his goodness? It's not a trick question, guys. Come on. Yeah. And so... Remember that, and that, that statement, that conversation with my friend has ever stayed with me, um, and I will never forget it, <laughs> is with intimacy, God will use you. You spend time with him, you pray, and you, and you read his word, study his word, uh, you love him, and then he will begin to pour out his secrets. Psalm 25 says, those who uh, confide in the Lord, he, he, he pours out his secrets to us, right? And so when we spend time with him, he will tell you, okay, hey, this is the plan that I have for you. I want to use you mightily in this context, in the area of healing and deliverance, in area of worship. I want to do this with you, through you. That is God wanting to use you. Okay, uh, versus um, where you can manipulate God and, and use him for, use his goodness and just to gain popularity or, you know, Stay in business. <laughs> Are you with me? So Jesus walked with intimacy. That's the first part. Um, with the Father. And uh, again, I would have done this. I would have broken this word down. Intimacy in the last semester. It simply is what? Into me, you see. Because I show you. Right? Into me, you see. See, because I 
show you. Um, now we are about uh, how many? Twelve. Okay, twelve in this classroom, in the physical classroom, and twenty-three online. So, yeah, there are about I don't know, thirty-five, close to forty, maybe. Um, how many of you know me personally? Like really well. <laughs> Someone raised their hand. <laughs> right? What's my favorite color or what's my favorite food? That shouldn't be hard, but favorite color is red. Okay. <laughs> so, someone, yeah, yeah. My wallet is red. My car is red. <laughs> my bag is red. You know. Uh, so there are so many things. Let's say as as, as aspects in my life that you might not necessarily know. That's not. It's, it, which is fine. But the point is, and you you might not know what angers me. You know what angers me, what disappoints me, uh, things that I don't like, etc., and all that. But if we spend time together, we become close friends. We build that intimate relationship. You will know, okay. And if someone comes and asks you, he's like, "Hey, his birthday is coming. You know, what should I gift him?" I like, "Oh no, he doesn't like that. He likes this." You with me? You get understand what I'm saying? Why? Because we because of our intimate relationship, and I have made myself vulnerable to you. I have I have allowed you to see into me. Like into me, you see. Why? Because I show you. I'm willing to show you. It's the same thing with the, with the Father, with our God in heaven. Is that if we just spend time to sit with Him, to seek Him, to seek His face. There are things that he wants to open up and reveal to you that he can only do it with you. And that is intimacy. And that's the kind of intimate relationship that Jesus walked with his father. right? And he just did not walk with intimate relationship. It says he walked with obedience. Right, and I've said uh, we we, uh, we make this declaration all the time. And the last line of a declaration is absolute. Surrender. And to you, I am in absolute surrender. And that absolute surrender simply looks like radical obedience. It's, you know, again, Jesus, everything what Jesus uh, did, he's constantly saying, you know, I, I say what the Father tells me to say. What I'm teaching you are not my own things. That means Jesus lived a life of radical obedience. Philippians chapter 2 uh, it says you know he was obedient to death a death even on the cross he was obedient <laughs> this is god guys we are talking about right so so jesus ministered out of intimacy and obedience and he is calling us um, to be obedient because uh, obedience is a language of intimacy okay obedience is the language of intimacy you can write that down Hashtag it later. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. You are my friends if you do whatever. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Okay. Uh, ministering based on the finished work of the cross. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. This is the second point. How Jesus ministered. The second key or a secret, so to say. Ministering based on the finished work of the cross. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17 says, When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So, what is it saying? So, Jesus, it's saying that in verse 16 that Jesus. You know, ministered healing and deliverance. Why? Because in this next verse, it's it's written based on what is written in Isaiah that he himself took on infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Okay, look at me. Tell me now, Jesus has Jesus gone to the cross already? Here, 
Has no. he? No, isn't it? Yeah. There's still time because Jesus is not yet, uh, you know, gone to the cross. He's not tested by trial and whatnot. So what is happening? Why is Jesus? It's why you know Matthew is quoting a scripture from Isaiah. It's simply saying that you know, in simple words, Jesus was making a down payment or an advance payment. That Jesus knew that he was going to go to the cross. Jesus knew that he was going to pay their prices. Yes? Okay. And so he ministered based on the finished work of the cross. So on for Jesus, it was like he knew, okay, I am going to do the work of the Father. I'm going to endure the cross. I'm going to die on the cross, rise again. And so he ministered healing and deliverance to everybody who was present at that time as an advance payment because he knew that he was going to shed his blood for them. And so now we are on the other side of the cross. Yeah, so payment is completely being made. And so we are being encouraged to minister based on the finished work of the cross. Right? By his stripes, we are going to be healed. Huh? By his stripes, we are going to be healed. We are healed. Isn't it? And so, uh, you know, we need to let that scripture sink in really and understand the power of that. And second, and thirdly, ministering from a place of dominion and authority. Ministering from a place of dominion and authority. Um, so in Luke chapter 4, verse 34, it says, Let us alone what we have to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth. Do you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So what's the context there? Jesus has crossed the lake and he's gone to the other side. And then there comes a man who is demon possessed, right? Legion. Um, but the demons recognized the power and the authority that Jesus was coming in. And the demons are saying, it's like, leave us alone. What do you want us to do? You know, what do you want with us? Just let it be. Uh, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. God. Verse 36 of the same chapter, Luke chapter 4, verse 36. What a word this is. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they came out. Okay? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits. Now, we can spend an entire semester learning about the words authority and 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 spirit because and power because they are two different things they are not the same thing okay authority is different power is different okay and like i said it's a subject for another day uh, and then it goes on to say in luke chapter 10 verse 19 behold i give you the authority i give you the authority why is jesus not saying power who gives us the power? Yes, thank you. Someone is awake. Thanks, Nelson. <laughs> right? So Jesus has commissioned us. So authority comes with the commission. Hear me out. Authority comes with commission. That means just as the Father sent me, I send you. That's commission. That's authority. I give you the authority. But the power comes with the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus says. Tarry around Jerusalem. Don't go out until I tell you when. Why? Because you have the authority, but you also need the power to go and be my witnesses. Are you with me? But Holy Spirit has been given to us. Now, so now we have authority and power for us to go out and minister healing and deliverance. So, first three points is what? Minister healing and deliverance based on intimacy and obedience, finished work of the cross, dominion and authority, and finally, minister through the presence and the power of the Spirit, which we've just spoken of. Right? Je um, Jesus operated with the power of the Holy Spirit in ministering healing and deliverance. Okay, so if Jesus did everything what he did with the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, how much more should we walk in? Okay, Jesus is our absolute standard, guys. Okay, if you don't remember anything what you learned from this class, 
it's okay, I guess. But, but just go back and see how Jesus lived his life. He is the standard. Don't keep any other man as your standard, a man or, or a woman as your standard. Right? Uh, which is fine. It's, 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 it's absolutely fine to honor and uh, acknowledge the anointing the another person is carrying. Um, but our standard, our absolute standard must be Jesus, has to be Jesus. Right? We do because he has sent us. He's commanded us to go and do. So let him be the standard uh, for your basis of ministry. Understood? All good? Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, pause here. We'll take a break and we'll resume in the next hour. Thank you.